Man, these parts look really good. This may be my best fabrication job yet. Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to Motor City Boatworks. Let's get to work. All right, we're back in the shop today. If you're new to the channel, I want to welcome you. And if you're one of our returning subscribers, welcome back to the shop. I especially want to take a minute to welcome our Patreons, those of you who are donating to keep the channel going. I really appreciate it. For this week's project, I'm gonna talk about how I fabricated fiberglass end caps for the rub rail of my pocket trawler. A couple episodes ago, I completed installing the rub rail on my Alban 27 pocket trawler. And if you remember, in the aft corners of the boat, instead of wrapping the rub rail around a 90 degree angle i decided to cut the rub rail so that the two would kind of meet at a 90 degree this seems to be the most vulnerable place on the alban 27 you know insofar as the hull deck flange getting damaged so it seemed like it would be a smart idea to have something a little more robust type of protection there at the corners and of course it would also cover up where the rub rail was cut my original plan was to use something like this. This is a piece of rubber that's used in like uh, marine docking, right? On your, on your dock, it's used for the corner to kind of protect your boat from the edges of the wooden dock. I thought about using this on the corners of my boat, but I just don't like the way it looks. It just doesn't fit proper. And I ended up deciding that I was gonna try and fabricate something out of fiberglass. If you're new to the channel and you haven't seen the episode where I fabricated some fiberglass engine room door aid boxes, in that video, I talk about some specific steps that I use to create a mold and then fabricate a fiberglass part. You're gonna to wanna to check it out. So the basic process goes something like this. The first step is to go ahead and create a mold. In this case, it's a male plug that the fiberglass will be laid over. After you've got a shape, you're gonna lay the fiberglass over the plug, build up successive layers, use some trimming, do some finishing, and ultimately you should come up with the part that you're basically trying to make. Now there's lots of ways to do this. Some people are experts at this. This is just kind of a poor man's way of coming up with a fabricated fiberglass part. This process has a lot of steps. It's kind of tedious, and the quality of your end product is usually a direct result of how good your initial mold, your initial plug is. So what I've done is I've taken a leftover piece of the new rub rail and I put it around a piece of wood and then I have some scrap acrylic plastic. I use it sometimes to make knife sheaths and some other type of things. Using this material, I, I warmed it up and then kind of bent it around the scrap rub rail material. This way getting a really nice tight profile to create a, a cap. I'll create two of these, join them together. This will become the plug for the fiberglass. I'll lay the fiberglass over this acrylic plug and I'll be able to fabricate my rub rail end caps. Now, why don't I use the actual rub rail as the plug? Well, the reason is because I wanna be sure that the fiberglass will release from the plug and the actual rub rail, the soft rubber is just too porous. It'll be too sticky. This acrylic makes an excellent slick surface once you apply releasing agent and the fiberglass will come right off of it. Also, by thermal molding the acrylic, I'm able to kind of make the shape of what the cap will actually look like insofar as its cross section diameter. I did think about just putting plastic or duct tape over the rub rail on the boat and using that as a plug and just starting to fiberglass right there. But it's really messy and it's just not what you want to do on a brand new expensive rub rail that you went all through the effort of installing. So once I have two pieces of thermal molded acrylic that match the profile of the rub rail, I put those onto the corner and I bring them together in about a 90 degree angle. Once I kind of have them in position, I've got to bridge the gap between the two pieces of acrylic. And for that, I use old reliable Gorilla duct tape. I like this heavier duct tape 
it works real well when you're fiberglassing parts because fiberglass tends not to stick to it when you use a releasing agent. It's so robust that you can use it to bridge gaps and kind of build up a plug for fiberglassing later on. Motor City Boat Works has no sponsors and I get no compensation from any of the companies or the products that I sometimes mention on my channel. However, in the description, I sometimes put links for Amazon where you can find some of the tools or items that I'm using in the restoration of my boat. Amazon does provide a small commission if you use those links. Now, once I've got everything kind of put together, you can see 90 degree angle end cap plug. Of course, on the Alban 27, nothing is symmetrical, so the port side is not the same as the starboard. It's gotta be a little bit different. But since I have the basic parts, I can easily do the same procedure on the opposite side of the boat. With the plug completed, now it's time to start laying fiberglass. And I always like to start with a very, very lightweight 0.75 or maybe one ounce fiberglass cloth. It's really hobby cloth. It captures the contours of the mold really well. Now for the fiberglassing, I like to use West Systems Epoxy. Everyone has their own choice of what they want to use. I just find it to be very consistent and very reliable. The important thing to remember is that you're using epoxy resin. The first layer of fiberglass is just to capture the profile of the plug. The successive layers of five or seven ounce fiberglass are what are going to give the actual object its rigidity and give it its strength. In this type of application, it's always easier to fiberglass a little bit bigger than what the object is and then trim it back after the fact to kind of clean everything up you want to do at least three layers of the five or seven ounce fiberglass cloth this is what's going to really build up the part and it's going to make it nice and rigid between your layers of cloth of course you're going to sand and you're going to trim it back and you're going to remove all the meat hooks sometimes the sanding will reveal gaps or places maybe where the fiberglass wasn't filled in properly pay particular attention to any gaps or any holes or anything that has been revealed once you do your initial sanding. Always pay attention to the corners to make sure you have really good coverage. Hey, let me take a moment to show you one of my new gadgets. I often struggle when I'm doing this type of project. I don't have an extra set of hands to hold something while I'm working on it or even trying to film at the same time. Check this thing out. It is a table mounted flexible arm and it's able to be adjusted at a different angles using the ball socket. I find it just works fantastic for moving and holding a piece off of a table so that you can do your work. I call it the third arm. All right, let's take a look at this thing here. I've got one of them done. It's looking, it's nice and rigid. This looks good. Let's do a dry fit and see how it works. Yeah, this, this is looking like it's supposed to. I think it's going to work out pretty good. Once you've got your layers done, it's time to begin the finishing process. You've got to fill in the weave of the fiberglass cloth with some sort of thickened epoxy. I like to start with coital silica mixed with epoxy resin. Later on, I switch to some sort of low density fairing compound. So here we are, we've come to the point, I used a low density filler with the epoxy resin to smooth out the weave, but I'm just not happy with the results. I feel like it's not quite smooth enough this is sometimes an issue when you need some type of epoxy fairing compound that is a little bit easier to spread, smooths a little bit better, sands down a little bit better. I'm going to have to try and come up with something. You can see the little pinholes here and, and kind of imperfections in the surface. And I really feel like it's got to be better than this before we get to the point of trying to put on paint. I'm not sure how I'm going to fix this. I'm going to think about it and see what solution I come up with. Today, hopefully, is the final sanding of the end cap. So I think I've come up with a solution on how to get a better finish on these end caps. Back when I was working on the Compact 16 Pilot House conversion, 
One of the products that I use to help get the CUSA board be particularly smooth and fair was a product called 3M Glazing Fairing Compound. It's commonly used in automotive industry and it gives a real nice sandable smooth surface. It's fantastic for filling in the pores on CUSA board for final painting. But this product was difficult to get a hold of during the COVID-19 pandemic. And so I recently switched to a Total Boat product, something I heard about on Boatworks today. This is Total Boat Epoxy Fairing Compound. And I think it's going to be something similar to the 3M product. And we'll see how it does. It's about $40 for a quart of material. It comes in two containers when you open them up one is blue one is kind of orange you mix the two together and it turns into a green color that's what tells you that you got it mixed properly we'll be doing the final shaping and trying to make them look good so that they can be ready for priming and paint So we're getting to the end of these uh, end caps here and the finish is actually pretty good but if you look closely you can see that there is some scratch marks from sandpaper and I think we're going to try and clean those up just a little bit and maybe apply one more coat of paint. I think it'll improve the way they look but they're coming along quite nicely. They're looking really good. Man, these parts look really good. This may be my best fabrication job yet. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to try and attach this thing to the corner of the rub rail. We've got some 3M 4200 black. This is a marine sealant adhesive that we're going to use to kind of attach these things if you're enjoying this episode would you do me a favor hit the like button and maybe leave a comment below i invite you to subscribe and if you really want to help out the channel well please consider leaving a donation on patreon this channel would not be possible without your support this is so tight on here you gotta come up with a way to get it on there What do you think about that? How about that? That's it. How's that look there? Good, yeah? Okay, this is it. So I had it on backwards.
and the time to clean it is now before it dries because once it dries uh, there's really no way to get it off other than to mechanically remove it kind of scrape it off and you don't want to do that it'll damage the surface so that is what it looks like I think it came out pretty good I'm very very happy with it this might be one of the best fiberglass fabrication jobs I've done so far excellent I gotta say just a year ago I probably would not have had the confidence to think that a project like this would have turned out as well as it did this just goes to show that if you practice on successive projects and kind of work yourself up to your masterpiece, your skills can develop over time and you might really be pleased with the end result. We're going to say this one's done. Well, there you go. Another successful episode. Do me a favor. Be sure to tell a friend about Motor City Boatworks. Go ahead and post my videos across social media. We've got to let people know about what we're doing here. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Stay motivated. If you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button. These videos would not be possible without your support.